Advanced Financial Accounting PowerPoint Presentation. In this presentation, we will discuss translation versus remeasurement. Get ready to account with Advanced Financial Accounting. Translation versus remeasurement. Methods to restate foreign entity statements to US dollars. So the most straightforward method is gonna be translation of foreign entities functional currency statement to US dollars. So the translation is what we'll use, the most straightforward method when the entity statement uh, is using the functional currency. So typically, if the if the entity is using the functional currency and we need to translate it, then we'll simply translate it from the functional currency to the US dollars. And then there's remeasurement of foreign entity statement into its functional currency. So remeasurement means that the, the, the entity is running their bookkeeping in a currency that is not the, the functional currency. Right, so then we're going to have to remeasure. We're going to use this term remeasure rather than translate here to the functional currency. So after we remeasure to the functional currency, um, after remeasurement, statements need to be translated to the reporting currency if the functional currency is not the U.S. dollar. So in other words, if we're assuming in in this case, in the case of the remeasurement, or let's say we have an entity that we're going to be consolidating a subsidiary uh, entity in another country and we're in the US and we need to basically consolidate these, date these together in terms of US dollars at the end of the day. If the entity is using the functional currency uh, as, as their financial statements, their bookkeeping is in the functional currency, then we can simply use the term translate it to the, the US dollars, which will be the parent currency that we're talking about here. If however, the foreign entity is having their books in some currency that is not the functional currency, then what we're going to have to do is remeasure it. Uh, we want to use remeasurement to the functional currency. We want to measure, remeasure it first to the functional currency rather than straight to uh, the US dollar. So we're going to remeasure to the functional currency. And after we, re we remeasure to the functional currency, if the functional currency is the US dollar, then, then we should be able to stop there. That's okay. If, however, the functional currency is not the U.S. dollar, then we would have to go from the functional currency and then translate to uh, the U.S. dollar. So we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go. So let's think about translation first. Let's go into that in a little bit more depth. This is what's going to be used most of the time because you would, you would imagine that if you had a foreign entity, a subsidiary that you're going to consolidate possibly with the statements of the parent company that's in U.S. dollars, you would think that the functional currency of the foreign entity would either be you know possibly the us dollar or i mean if it was related to to the uh the parent company more intimately or if it's more independent you would think that the functional currency would then be the foreign currency and the and the market they they are in and so if the foreign currency was the functional currency then we could just go straight to the the translation of the financial statements which are in the foreign currency basically to the US dollar. So translation then would be the most common method uh, used in this in this process used when foreign entities record uh, recording currency is the foreign entities functional currency. So once again, used when the foreign entities recording currency what they keep their books in on is the foreign entities functional currency the, that is their functional currency which we talked about last time. That means that we could simply do the translation to the parent company currency, the US dollar. Current rate will be used to convert recording currency asset and liability accounts to the US dollar. So the current rate, meaning the rate as of basically the end date on the balance sheet, which of course, again, makes sense because we're talking about assets and liabilities, basically balance sheet accounts. And you would it would make sense pretty much to be using the you know uh, ending balance sheet date for them. Current rates are also used to convert recording and functional currency balance sheet account balances uh, to US dollars. The average rate for reporting period will be used to translate revenues and expenses. So when we translate the revenues and expenses, it would kind of make sense that we, we have a time frame, a beginning and an end now. So we're going to look for an average rate that will give us an approximate rate for that time frame, as opposed to basically the rate as of the end of that time frame. Translation adjustments will be a uh, component of the comprehensive income. So we talked about that as one of the questions we're going to have if there's going to be some kind of adjustment related to the translation adjustment, because uh, especially if we if we end up using, obviously, we have the different rates here that we could be using the balance sheet date rate, and then an average rate, 
well, then we could end up with a, with a difference. Then where are we going to put that? Do we put that on the income statement or, or where does that go? We're going to put the translation adjustments will be a component of the comprehensive income. So current rate method is the name of this method. And then we get into the remeasurement. So now we'll talk about remeasurement as opposed to once again, translation. Translation was what we went through. Now we're talking about remeasurement. Remeasurement of the foreign entity's financial statements from the recording currency used by the entity, the recording currency used by the entity in their books into the foreign entity's functional currency. So now we're talking about a, situ a situation where they're, the currency that they're using for their books isn't their functional currency which we determined what the functional currency was by looking at some of the factors in the prior presentation. So once again, restatement of the foreign entities, financial statements from the recording currency, what they record their books in, uh, used by the entity into the foreign entities, functional currency, whether that be us dollars or not. Remember, of course, the ultimate goal is to get to us dollars so that we can then combine them. If we have to do a consolidated, uh, reporting with the parent company, but we have to do this remeasurement process first. Used only when the functional currency is not the same as the recording currencies used to record the books and record uh, records of the foreign entity. So that's, it's not as common, right? Because it's used only when the functional currency is not the same as the recording currency used to record the books and records of the foreign entity. Uh, temporal method is the name of this method. Uh, continuing on with the remeasurement process, well, we're on remeasurement. The current rate is used to remeasure uh, monetary balance sheet items. So we're going to use the current rate, which is the end rate on the balance sheet. The historical rates are used to remeasure non-monetary balance sheet items like fixed assets, inventories, long-term investments. So note that here, we're using the historical rate. And that's, again, you can kind of make an argument for that. Why, why would we use the historical rate? Well, that's the rate at the point in time that we had these large purchases possibly with if you're talking about large items like like uh, fixed assets and one top long-term long investments so historical rate then used there then the average rate is used to remeasure revenues and expenses so now we're on the income statement where the end date the rate at the end of the time period doesn't seem appropriate it seems like we should be using a rate that would be more reflective of the time frame instead of just the end of the period so we're going to use some type of average uh, in that case, and then the imbalance adjustments needed due to these applications will be included in the income statement as a remeasurement gain and loss. So notice here on the remeasurement, you're going to have a difference here. Why? Because you're remeasuring using, we got three different rates here that we're using to remeasure the financial statements that were in balance, right? And so there's going to be an adjustment. And again, where, where does it going to go? This adjustment, are we going to put a gain or loss due to the remeasurement? Well, here we are, we're going to put the imbalance adjustment needed due to this application will be included in the income statement as a remeasurement gain or loss. We'll actually call it label it that, but it will be on the income statement. So let's take a look at a, a couple scenarios just to just to think about this a bit further. Scenario one, recording currency is the functional currency. And you would think this would kind of make sense. You've got a subsidiary, you're a U.S. parent company. We've got the subsidiary in a foreign country with has foreign currency. And uh, if they're if they're more uh, operational over, the, you would think then the recording currency would be the functional currency, right? And if so, if their functional currency is the foreign currency, uh, then you would think their recording currency would would be the the what they would be using uh, as well be their functional currency. So that would probably be the more common case. And in that case, it's going to be an easier kind of process because we would then just translate the functional statements. So we look at their statements that are in the foreign currency, which is the functional currency. It will just going to translate from the functional currency to the reporting currency, which we're assuming in our scenario is the US dollar, right? So, so it would be a pretty straightforward process. We'd say, yeah, there's their financial statements. The financial statements are in, well, in theory, it's a straight, it'd be a long process, but at least we don't have to do two translations in that case. We can just say, hey, look, it's the, yeah, that's their functional currency. It's in the place that uh, they're at. So that's what the financial statements are in. Let's work on then just straight translation. And we'll have to go through the process of using whatever rates, the rates that we looked at in order to do that translation process. So it's not an easy process, but at least it's a one step <laughs> translation and, and not the remeasurement involved in it as well. So no more steps are needed because the consolidated and financial reporting can now be prepared in the reporting currency. So we'll just have to do that one 
translation so it looks something like this for scenario one we've got the recording currency is going to be equal to the functional currency so when the recording currency is equal to the functional currency even though it's not the u.s dollar it's or it may not right it's, we're saying that's going to be some foreign currency that the recording currency is equal to the functional then we're simply going to translate and then we have the we have then the recording currency Okay, let's take a look at scenario two. Now the recording currency is not the functional currency. So they're doing their financial statements in a recording currency, their bookkeeping in a currency that's not the functional currency. However, the functional currency is the reporting currency. So in that case, what we have to do is remeasure the financial statements from the recording currency to the functional currency. So now we have to do this remeasurement thing from the recording to the, fun to the functional, but no more work is needed from that step since the consolidation and financial reporting reports can now be prepared in the functional currency because it is the same as the reporting currency right so now we have a situation where the recording currency is not the functional currency so it's a foreign company they're recording their currency in something in, the, in possibly the foreign uh currency but possibly that's not their functional currency we've determined that their functional currency is actually the same currency as the u.s as the u.s company the parent company which we're saying is the u.s dollar well in that case then we still kind of have like a one-step process but that one-step process isn't translation but rather remeasurement we're going to do remeasurement but after we do the remeasurement that's all we have to do we don't have to then translate again because once we remeasure, now their functional currency is the reporting currency, which we're saying is the currency of the U.S. dollar, of the U.S. of the parent company, which we're saying in this example would be the U.S. dollar. So still not too complex of a process, but a little bit, a little bit different due to that change. So here we go, scenario two. We have the recording currency, uh, which we're going to remeasure, use remeasurement to the functional currency. And then the functional currency is equal to the reporting currency. So then we can just push forward uh, from that point. Scenario three. Now we're talking, this is the most difficult scenario here. This is the tough one. The recording currency is not the functional currency. And the functional currency is also different from the reporting currency. So now we're talking about the recording currency, whatever they're recording their books in is not the functional currency it's not it's not what we determined their functional currency to be and we talked about the factors of that in the prior presentation what does it mean to be the functional currency how can we determine what their functional currency is and the functional currency is also different from the reporting currency so in other words we're thinking of ourselves as we're the, the parent companies in the u.s we have another uh we have another uh, subsidiary somewhere else their recording currency is not the functional currency so if the functional currency was the currency where they're located, for some reason they're recording their books in a currency that's not that, <laughs> and you would think then that the currency they would be reporting in would be the U.S. dollar would be their functional currency, even though they're lo located somewhere else. But no, it's not. And therefore, if that were the situation, the functional currency, uh, we'd have to do kind of a two-step. We'd have to do both the remeasurement and uh, and then the translation. So let's take a look at that. We'd, we'd remeasure the financial statements from the recording currency to the functional currency. So whatever currency they decided to record the books in for whatever reason, we're going to remeasure that to the functional currency, which we determine, we know how to determine that from the prior presentation. And then uh, if the functional currency isn't the US dollar, which is the, which is the currency of the parent company that we need to get to so that we can do the consolidation process, then we're simply, now that we have it in the functional currency, we're going to then translate uh, the the financial statements from the functional currency to the reporting currency, which we're assuming is the U.S. dollars. This will allow the consolidation and financial statements to be prepared in the reporting currency. So again, we're having the recording currency uh, that needs to be remeasured to the the functional currency. And then if the functional currency, so once again, the recording currency wasn't the U.S. dollar and, and uh, the recording currency wasn't the U.S. dollar and it wasn't their functional currency. And then we remeasured it to the functional currency, which still wasn't the U.S. dollar, which is the currency of the parent. So then we have to translate it to the reporting currency and then we're good to go. So this would be a more less likely scenario. So in any case, but the more complex one. So the summary, if we summarize this in like an if then kind of uh, flow chart type function, we're gonna say that the RC equals the recording currency and FC equals the functional currency. So if the recording currency it, by the, the 
the company we have a we have a, a subsidiary in a foreign country we're saying the, they're recording currency currency is the functional currency then all we need to do is translate it to the u.s dollar obviously if their recording currency is their functional currency and it is the u.s dollar then there's no problem because you know that's not, that's not a problem but if the recording currency uh is equal to the functional currency and it's not the u.s dollar then we simply just need to translate it so we got to just translate it to the u.s dollar but if the recording currency is not equal to the functional currency then we're going to have to remeasure to the functional currency and then if the functional currency equals the u.s dollar then there's no more work that needs to be done we're just going to remeasure so instead of doing translation we do the remeasure but then we'll be in the in the u.s dollar and we're done however if the functional currency is not equal to the U.S. dollar, then we have to take what we just did the remeasurement to the functional currency and then translate it to the U.S. dollar.